to create a guest speaker booking form. Now, there are many different reasons why you might use forms, but one of them might be if you are hiring in guest speakers to present to any of your events, your workshops, your online presentations. In my Legends Lab Academy, I occasionally invite in experts to come and speak to my audience. And I am just now automating the process of filling in a form that my, that my guest speakers can fill in a form to submit all of their information, their headshots, for instance, their speaker bio. Uh, maybe they have some kind of product promotion or giveaway that they'd like to share with the audience, contact information that they might like to share with my audience, and also to give them the option to select or enter the title of their topic and the description and learning outcomes of their presentation as well. This is going to save you hours of that back and forth email ping pong of have I got your headshot? <laughs> What's your topic about? Can you submit your information? Did they submit their information yet? You know, it just takes up so much unnecessary admin. So I'm going to just walk you through a process of how to create an example speaker form. Now, bear in mind, obviously, there's endless different kinds of elements and, and information that you can collect in these forms. I'm going to be doing a demo of one that I want my guest speakers to fill in. And of course, once you know the process, you can add in any other elements that you want as well. So I'm going to go in, first of all, I'm just gonna double check I don't have any already. No, I don't. Let's go to add a form. By the way, we're in websites and funnels. Click on forms and then form builder. And this is where you go and create any forms. Then add a form, start from scratch. Now here, it will open up the form building area. And if you haven't been here before, quick little orientation. First of all, always name your forms up here. So I'm gonna call this um, guest presenter information form for Sarah's Legends Lab workshops. Okay, so this only you see, this is the name of your form from the administrator's point of view, no customers see that name. So you just wanna make sure that you name it in a way you're gonna be able to find it. Now over on the left hand side, couple of things you're gonna to want to know about. First of all is the plus button, which means elements. This is where you're gonna pull over any data that you want to collect. This is how you can create all kinds of forms with all kinds of information. You can have, you know, drop downs, check boxes, you can have text coming up, you might add images at the top, you might want to add a terms and conditions button down there, you might want to add in um, the option for people to upload files. So I'm definitely going to be doing that today so that they can upload their headshot, for instance. Um, that is going to allow them to drop drag and drop their headshot photograph in there which will then save in their client record when they submit the form i'll get a notification and my team members can then go ahead and put together for instance any kind of sales pages or anything that might need to be, might need to be done okay <laughs> by the way you can also collect payments on forms and there's loads of other um, generic data that you can ask for. Inside custom fields, we're still in the add elements, custom fields is where you can create any kind of question imaginable. This is literally where you can come up with any type of drop down, selection list, checkbox, big paragraph entry section where they might just insert their bio. This is where you create these unique questions that are not generic stuff like this, okay? I'm gonna be showing you how to do that in a second because I'm gonna have some very um, custom information that I want my audience, my guest speakers to submit to me, okay? The other thing in this left-hand side you're gonna to wanna to know about is this thing here called conditional logic. So this is how you can actually create different steps for people based on how they answered specific questions. So you can literally remove certain fields or selection criteria. You can send them to a, a URL. So this is really cool after they submitted a form, now go here. Um, you can do all kinds of different things both here and inside the workflows area. I'm not doing a demo on that today, but I'm just letting you know that it's there. It is an option. You can get very fancy pants with forms. Um, however, if you are wanting to do even more fancy pants stuff and create more quiz-like forms where people might, for instance, have certain lead scoring or scores or certain results that come out the end, you're going to want to use surveys instead of forms. So make sure you have a chat to a tech expert about that. <laughs> Again, just giving you a heads up about the number of different options that are here. The final thing here on the left-hand side is that little ding-dong bell. And this is how you turn on 
getting the form results sent to you by email if you want that, okay? So it may be that you like getting these submissions. In my case, I am going to be turning this on because when somebody fills in this form, one of my guest speakers, I'm then gonna have actions that I need my team to follow up with, such as you know locking in the date, locking in the time, and um, you know filling in sales pages and stuff so that our students know who's coming, what they're gonna be learning. <laughs> So I will be doing this. Um, I'm turning on an email notification for when somebody fills this form in. And the subject is going to be guest presenter information for Sarah's Legends Lab workshop. Copy that. Let's go back to the notification. Has been submitted. Please organize date. Organize slash confirm date. All right. The email is going to go to myself because um, they get picked up inside my account. But, you know, it might be that you're sending that to yourself. It might be that you're sending this to a virtual assistant or a team member. And um, this only reply to email um, only needs to be added if, if you've got somebody different to yourself. <laughs> And you don't need to add anything from um, in there either. Okay. I am going to also send the submission to the guest presenter just in case they typed in anything wrong. I want to connect any information. So again, I'm just going to copy the form. In fact, I'm going to turn that off right now. But this is where you can um, turn it on and subject blah, blah, blah of the notification by email of the form that your submitter has filled in <laughs> all right now the other thing you have just in terms of the orientation here is over on the right hand side a uh, big option here is integrate this will show you how your form is going to show up on a page and this form link is the link that you're going to be giving to your guest presenters so if i copy the form link it says it's copied now um, or you can press open form link this is the link you want to be giving to anyone that you want to fill this form in all righty just so you know where that is and finally this funny little symbol here that looks like kind of two matches laying on top of each other side by side. This is your styles and options button. This is where you can adjust kind of the way that the form is laid out, the colors and the background. If you want to have an image in that background area, this is also where you can um, choose from some of our templates if you want to have something a little bit more sexy and pretty. And options is the most important one that I go to here is um, this is where what happens when somebody submits the form. So what is it that happens on that submission? This is where you can either choose to send them to an, a URL. So it might be that you send them to some kind of web page. Um, I don't know. It could just be that you just have a confirmation message that would just say something like, thank you for filling this form in. Really glad that um, you have done that. We've got the information. One of the team will be in touch with you soon to lock in the date. I don't know, <laughs> whatever you want it to be. The other thing I turn on in this options setting is down here under form settings. I turn on what's called a sticky contact. This means that if this person is already a contact in your system, it's gonna pre-fill whatever information it knows about them already. Just makes it a little bit easier for the person filling it in, basically. Finally, make sure that you obsessively press save. This is a cloud-based platform. It's based on the internet and your internet connection. If your internet connection dies and you haven't pressed save, when it comes back online, you're gonna be returned to whatever you had there when you last press save. So I've just created myself a on-purpose OCD about pressing save. I recommend you do the same. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is note that the bit in the white is the bit that your recipient is going to see. So I'm gonna add a title in here. Um, by that, I'm gonna press in add an element, quick add and scroll down to the text option. Let's drag and drop the text. This is where I'm going to say something like thank you for um, being a guest speaker. So I'm just going to fill that in. So here we go. I've just uh, added in the title and to add in that kind of subtitle, all I did was drag in a second text box. And then on that second text box, I just changed the size of my font. And obviously you can change all your colors. You can add in images and all that kind of fancy stuff. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that my first name, last name is critical information is all set as required fields so that they can't skip through the form and accidentally not put their name in all right so let's pop in under first name put in required and under last name we'll also put in required okay now from here we um i'm going to want their phone number for speakers because obviously if 
for instance, they don't turn up on the Zoom call, we can ring them and say, where are you? They, they've got a tech issue or something like that. All right, it's just to make sure that we remind them, don't forget you're going to be on in the next 60 minutes with Sarah, 15 minutes before, like, please, can you jump on now? so that we can do a uh, like a tech check. These are all the reasons why we might just use that phone number. Uh, inside this consent area, of course, you can change that um, however you want, um, or you can just remove it altogether. Um, I've always already had a conversation with my guests before I send them this form and invite them. So I'm just going to delete that altogether because I'm not doing any kind of cold outreach or anything with this and it just removes another step <laughs> so what I want to do here is first of all I want them to um, upload their um, let's do their headshot okay so over in our quick add add element quick add section we have the bit I showed you before this file upload let's move my head out of the way there file upload you're going to drag and drop it and you can move all of these around by the way um, later I'm going to click on this section to edit it. So when we click on that section, it's got the orange box around. Right-hand side is where we can now determine what this is all called. So the label is the title that shows up there. Please upload your headshot. Okay, please upload your speaker headshot. Okay, and um, it's going to be required. Down in advanced settings, you can kind of change your special custom field names that you want if you want to. Um, but I don't play around with that. I just leave it exactly as it is. I'm going to press save. Remember, obsessive saving. Another thing I'm going to want from them is their speaker bio. Now, first of all, I'm, I'm going to see if I already have this custom fields. Let's put bio. Oh, I've got a few there. Provide a short instructor bio. There we go. Already have that field. Okay. Uh, oh, that's about course creation. So I'm not going to use that one. Do, 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 do. No, no, no. Okay, I'm going to make one from scratch. Excellent. So over in plus add an element, quick elements, I'm going to put in a bit of sing multi line text so that they can upload their full bio description. Here we go. Multi line text. Drag and drop. Click on that element to edit it. And over here, this is the question in label I'm going to put. Please provide a short, let's put this in capitals because we always have people who submit massive bios, a short professional bio about you, your expertise, Naya, Maya, about you, your expertise, and any key achievements. That will impress <laughs> the students. <laughs> uh, something like that. Okay, so be specific about what you actually want from people. And we're going to offer them a required and it's multi line. Save. Great. Next thing we're going to want is a description of their workshop title and description sections. Now, for me, um, I invite people who are filling workshop slots that I've already specifically set in my Legends Lab agenda. So I'm actually going to be providing a drop down menu of the topic options that's going to say to them, which one of these topics are you teaching? Because I have a very prescribed list that I'm bringing people in to cover the very specific topics I've chosen. Um, if, for instance, you are leaving it quite open to your speakers, what their topic's about, you might want to put in a single line piece of text and say, what is your topic or the title of your topic or your workshop? I'm going to do a drop down for mine. So I'm going to drag a drop down. And I think I'm going to put my topic drop down before the headshots. So I'm dragging this multi drop down here. Click on it, orange sign. We can first change the title. And then in options is where we add all of the drop down options. So I am going to put here um, what topic will you be teaching? Okay. And I don't know why I write mine like sentence case, but I do. <laughs> now, I'm going to, again, make this a required question. And in the options area, this is where I'm now going to go across and list all of the workshops that I have allocated to go to my guest speakers. OK, so all I'm doing is grabbing the workshops. What have we got here? I'm just going to try and find my next one. Do, 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 do. OK, 
Okay. Um, I'm just going to go in here, delete that, and press paste, and then paste in the topics. Now, when I get to the next section, I'm just going to have a couple more just to show you what we do here. Bear with me one second. I'm just bringing in. Okay. Let's see now. We just press add an option and we can just keep on adding and adding and adding and adding right here. Okay, so you just keep on going. I'm going to pause while I finish doing that. So I've just added in uh, all of my topics that I've got coming up for guest speakers to be doing. We're simply going to press save and that is saving and she's saved. And we'll show you in a minute preview of what that looks like. But now we've created those. Basically, when someone presses drop down, all of those options are going to show. Um, what topic are we teaching? The other thing I want to have is the description of the workshop with their learning outcomes. So we're going to click on a multi-line option here underneath the topic. Um, we're going to turn this into, uh, please provide a detailed description of your workshop under the selected topic, including what they will learn and a bullet point list of Okay, so again, make sure you're specific about the language you want them to use, or guess what? You're going to have to do all the editing work, right? <laughs> you want to get your speakers to um, be set up for success by providing them with the right information of what you're expecting from them, okay? So make sure you get that question written properly and press save. And of course, we want to set that one to required as well. So I'll just give that another save so it sets as required. Now, um, I may have a couple of other things that I want to include in here. However, for instance, um, there's social media bios. Do we have social media fields set as a standard? Let me see. I don't think we do. So I think I have it as a custom field. Social media links. Enter. Uh, additional info, social media. Do we have social media accounts? I'm going to post other social media accounts. Social links, maybe. Might be under social links. I'm pretty sure I have had something like that before. Okay, no, I'm going to add a new line then. All right, let's go to quick add and let's add in another multi line of text. Um, I think I'll add, I'm just going to show you what questions I've got. I'll pause this and show you which questions I put in just to give you some ideas of what you might want in yours. I've just added in a few more questions here. I've added, please provide your, obviously your short bio, um, any social media links that you want to share, your giveaway details so that um, we can, you know, offer them to our people. And if you have an affiliate program, please put the link for me to sign up. And then I've put in any additional questions for me. Now on the button, this is where you can obviously change the color, what you want that to look like, rah, 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 okay? So you can do whatever you want with the colors on there. And instead of saying button, submit info, submit speaker info. Lovely, lovely. So there we have um, all the information. And again, down here on the terms of service, you may want to just go and edit those links to go to yours. I'm going to remove mine at this particular stage because this is an internal document that I'm using with somebody I'm already working with. So I'm just going to remove those because I'm not actually selling anything in this particular document. Now, that is my form completed. Now we can give it a little preview. Click on your preview button up here and it'll take you to what your speaker, guest speaker is going to see. Okay, so there we go. We've got the different options, like what topic will you be teaching? You see there how it drops down and they can let me know which one they're the presenter of. Again, if they want to upload a headshot, they click on it, it opens up their file downloads over here and um, easy peasy for them to fill in that link there before the question mark is your link. But I always recommend going back to the form itself, clicking on those form options 
going down to, uh, sorry, not form options, <laughs> my apologies, <laughs> going to integrate, clicking on integrate and copy form link. That is now the link that you're going to give out to your speakers. Now, let me show you, this is actually quite a long gobbledygook kind of link. This will be link.youraccount.com forward slash widget, blah, 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 blah. All right, that's a bit of an ugly link. Um, we can, can create a pretty version of this link. You may have heard of things like pretty links or bit links you can actually do that inside your Techmatics account as well so I'm going to make a prettier link for that that I give to my people um, so press save again obsession obsession <laughs> press back and I'm gonna go to my websites area and inside of websites we have something called website redirect okay so inside these websites and funnels section go to URL redirects and we're going to press add a redirect. My domain is, um, it's going to be a, that workshop. So I'm just going to pick one of my domains I've connected, workshop.mydomain.com. And the path is going to be forward slash speaker info. Oh, I don't want it to be capital letters. Sorry. Speaker info. Okay. It's just a simple redirect to a URL. The target URL is the URL we're sending them to, which is the URL of our form. So that's what we're going to put, we're going to send them to. Add redirect. So now, instead of giving people that massive blah, 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 blah link, <laughs> I can simply give them the link workshops.sarahcordner.com forward slash speaker info. And I have spelt my own name wrong because, you know, it's Friday. <laughs> the time of recording this uh, let's hit enter and if it's all worked um it will have sent people to oh what's going on here sure oh, okay it's because i haven't got the i didn't put the whole code in it https okay www i can actually just get that sorry i'm typed in the wrong link now let me just go back to the actual thing here and copy it from here uh where is it gone speaker where are you where are you where's it gone Let's just press refresh on this. Let's press refresh on this little page. Okay, I found it. It's right there. <laughs> so that's just a redirect link and your direct form link obviously still works as well. So it doesn't matter which one of those you use. If you want to make a pretty link, there you go. That is how you add a form for your guest speakers or guest presenters to fill in. If you're running any kind of retreats, workshops, events, if you're running summits or anything like that, you are definitely going to want to set up one of these um, speaker forms so that you can start automating the whole process. Now, what I also do behind the scenes is I automate this further by creating a workflow that's triggered by somebody filling this form in that will then send notifications to my team members to then take action in getting that booked in or take whatever next step actions need to be taken. If you need any help with anything at all, the best place for you to go to, first of all, is inside your Techmatics account, you have a knowledge base Knowledge base. Inside your knowledge base over here, this will take you to all of the help guides. And these help guides have really, really good step-by-step -step and screenshot videos all in here. So for instance, if we've got forms, you hit enter, it's going to take you to all of the form training area. There's so many different forms in uh, form training and everything. Every feature training is in here. <laughs> the other place you can go to is the Techmatics website. Go to the support tab that's techmatics.com forward slash support you can jump on a daily free training call you can also hire our tech experts by the hour to help you get anything done that you want to do basically nice and easy yes. all right my loves have fun happy teching <laughs>